Hello everyone. Welcome to the next class of our uh, current batch and this class is also about basics. We are going to discuss about the characteristics of company in this particular class. If you actually go out and ask a child who is studying in class 5th that uh, can you tell me A, B, C, D or let's, let's read A, B, C, D, all the alphabets, all the letters and all that. He will be like, are you kidding me? I read that so long, long, long before and it's on my tips and so are these characteristics of companies for you. You have been studying this I think from class 11th for sure when uh, there was a subject called as business studies in which you read about the different forms of business organization and uh, one such form of business organization is company and when you read about company you of course read about the features of company or characteristics of company so this is not something very new to you but still we are going to discuss every point of it since it is there in our syllabus and more importantly since I want you to be very clear with the basics okay so let's start our today's class but before we actually go out to see okay artificial person perpetual succession my question to you is why company why do you think this beautiful form of business organization has at all been introduced so for that let's watch a video an animated one designed by me which is actually going to give you some fun clarity and uh, let's have a look sari umar khelta rahega ya koi kaam bhi karega bahut hua apman aap karunga so my kaam mr bunny and he's being insulted and after his insult he starts a proprietorship business with 1 lakh rupees okay He takes a loan of 5 lakhs. But, but, but. With 1 lakh investment, he had to pay 5 lakhs to bank. Because he started a proprietorship business. Oops. So with Bunny's death, the business also dies because it was proprietorship. So Bunny got to option number two and he started a partnership business with Honey. But loan again, loss again and liability. Aap aap hi koi rasta dikhaiye si so he wants to seek Sorry, the Umar. help of professionals like us. He walks up to CA, CMA, CS, whoever he might go, they all are going to advise him one thing only and that's it. That why are you engaged in these traditional forms of business organization when you can gift yourself the corporate status how can you do that by forming a company a company has a lot of benefits a lot of uh, features and a lot of exemptions and all that we are going to read at a later stage but at this particular point of time had you formed a company your business would not have died because of the future of perpetual succession had you formed a company you would not have to pay five lakhs to the bank if company has taken a loan if your business has taken a loan of one uh, if your business has taken a loan of five lakh the business only has to repay if it can if it cannot why will i repay right so there are some advantages, some features of a company which we are going to read in today's class. And let's start, let's get going with the very first one and one, one, one more thing. You have to remember this character of Bunny because we are going to use it uh, a lot of times. So he is one of my favorite characters. So our advice to Bunny is that go for a company. Which type of company, private, public, OPC, etc., etc., that we are going to discuss later on. But first of all, company. Company. The first feature of company is artificial person. What is artificial person? 
Of course, the company is a person, can it get married? Imagine marriage of supposedly one fine day you wake up and you receive an invitation card which says that Reliance weds Infosys. How about that? Can two companies get married? No, of course they cannot. And when they cannot get married, they cannot even go for divorce, right? Because they are artificial persons, they do not have the ability to see. They do not have the ability to speak or hear, nor they can get married, nor they can go for divorce, etc., etc. Then why are they person? Because they have a separate existence, because they can legally do a lot of things which an individual can. Just like we are citizens of India, they are also corporate citizens of India. Okay, so a company is an artificial person. It is not something which is created or which comes into existence by natural birth. It comes into existence by some artificial process that is by some legal birth, right? So that legal process is known as incorporating a company. How a company is incorporated that we will study later, right? But um, company comes into existence by operation of law. So under law, some procedure will take place and that will um, help us to bring a company into existence then comes separate legal entity with separate legal entity we come to a very famous case law which is salomon versus salomon i think throughout uh, your uh, journey and uh, throughout your journey of company law i would say one case law which you must remember and which I think everyone should be remembering is Salomon, right? If there is just one case law that you can remember, it has to be Salomon, right? So it's it's a very famous case law. It's, it's like uh, in Bollywood movies, you might remember some movies like uh, Dawn or like DDLJ, more importantly, right? So it is that case law for company law. What is Salomon versus Salomon and Company Limited? Well, Salomon was a very intelligent person. What he did is he formed a company. Fine, ma'am. Salomon formed a company. Okay. Just a second. He is Mr. Salomon and this can be Salomon's wife, who cares. Salomon had a proprietorship <coughs> business. Is it, is it okay? Right. Salomon had a proprietorship business. Now, he decided that I'll form a company and he wanted to form a public company. For those who do not know, a public company requires at least seven members. Okay, fine. So he needed seven members to form a company. One was he himself, second was his wife, thirdly his four sons and uh, one daughter. So that comes out, the total comes out to be seven members. So the prerequisite of forming a public company was satisfied that he got seven members and he incorporated a public company. Can he do so? Of course. Why can't he do so? Supposedly, I'm running my proprietorship business, uh, um, as in book my video. I want to tomorrow incorporate or uh, convert this into a company. Can I? Yes, of course. Subject to name availability, I have. I can incorporate a company and transfer the whole business in the name of the company. That's very well possible. So Salomon did the same. Now, there's no problem in that. The problem arises. Salomon, when transferred his business to the company, the company paid him certain purchase consideration. You have um, known about, you very well know about that amalgamation and all that, right? So you know that whenever a business is acquired, we have to pay certain purchase consideration. So in the form of purchase consideration, he was given some shares and he was also given some debentures. 
right he was given some shows and he was given some debentures so if we talk about the balance sheet of salomon company limited there were certain assets and on the liability side there was sure capital who were the shareholders salomon his wife his four sons and his daughter right apart from that there were certain debentures which were in the name of salomon himself and then there were some other unsecured creditors and all okay still no problem so far no problem all good now the problem arises what is the problem the problem is that the company ran into financial difficulties the company was not able to survive any more and now when the company was not able to survive any more the company had to sell off its assets and pay off its liabilities when we undergo this process of winding up what happens is that when the assets are sold first of all the secured creditors are paid off then unsecured creditors are paid off and then shareholders are paid off if any money is left for them clear so who are the secured creditors the debenture holders who is the debenture holders salomon himself it is salomon's company he himself is the debenture holder so when the assets were sold he took away a lot of money because he was the debenture holder and there was less left for the unsecured creditors so they got very angry they said that it is salomon's company only he should not get the money first we should get the money first but ideally if we talk about under the provisions of law the debenture holders have to be paid first it doesn't matter whether it's salomon's company or someone else's company the company is separate and salomon is separate salomon in the capacity of debenture holder in the capacity of shareholder in the capacity of director whatever he be he is different company is different they both are separate you cannot say that salomon is the one who is uh, salomon and company are the same thing so company should not pay to his uh, own etc etc no this was the judgment of the court and this clearly establishes the principle of separate legal entity so one of the beautiful feature of company which was established by this particular case law salomon versus salomon company limited right now some of you might uh, find this unfair imagine mr ambani ji okay uh, somehow ambani's company has to now wind up I, I let's let's it's just an example okay so don't be too emotional about it i take my own examples a lot in throughout the classes you might see shivangi ma'am dies shivangi ma'am dies you will see it a lot of time okay that i have started a company then i died so don't get emotional about anything these are just fictitious examples so supposedly mr amani's company has to wind up now what he did is he took away all the money and no money was left for the creditors wouldn't creditors get angry that it's ambani's company only he took away all the money so he is safe and sound and he destroyed all of us we are now running into financial difficulties because we could not recover our money from the lands so don't you think that's unfair because they are the ones who are managing the company they can twist and turn the company the way they want to So don't you think it's unfair? Yes, it is. Well, because this is unfair, we have a concept called as corporate veil, which we will study a little later. Which we will study a little later. Okay. So let's have a look at our case law. Salomon had a prosperous business he formed a company these were the shareholders and uh, he got this purchase consideration the company went into liquidation 
the assets were not sufficient to discharge everyone so nothing was left for the secure unsecured creditors and uh, they were angry thereafter they pleaded that Salomon should not be paid anything and we should be paid but but the judgment was that company has its own existence which is separate from its members and a shareholder cannot be held liable for the acts of the company whatever happened it happened with the company although the person was running the company doesn't really matter the company is different and the person is different clear okay now we come to the next feature limited liability one of the most beautiful feature of company limited liability see if bunny took a loan of 5 lakh rupees and he just had 1 lakh to repay the bank will come to his house attach his properties attach his bank balance whatever he has personally not in the business personally also they will take away everything but if you open a company, Salomon opened a company. If company is into financial difficulties, the company cannot ask for money from Salomon. That you have a beautiful bungalow or beautiful farmhouse of 20 crores, you give me that. The company cannot ask like that. The company just cannot ask like that, right? The company doesn't have right to do so. Why? Because any member any member is not liable towards the company the member is liable towards the company only up to a certain amount which amount ma'am supposedly this is a company salomon and company limited and salomon has agreed that okay i am going to take 10 shares of this company so i will give you 10000 and i'll take 10 shares salomon has paid only 5000 so Salomon is liable to contribute to the company 5,000. Company can only ask for 5,000 rupees from Salomon. If someone has agreed to take 10 shares and has given full 10,000, the person is not liable to contribute any further rupee. So zero liability, 5,000 liability. So the liability of the members of the company is limited to the amount that they have not paid on the shares they hold. Clear? We will discuss about limited liability when we uh, discuss about the different types of companies. So when we discuss the different types of companies, we also will discuss about this. Okay, that is what is a limited company, what is an unlimited company. So we also have an unlimited company. So in all these cases, the members have a limited liability. Company still has unlimited liability. The members have a limited liability. It will either be limited to the amount of unpaid, uh, to the amount unpaid on shares or to the amount that they have guaranteed, that they have guaranteed, clear? Okay, moving further, perpetual succession, no matter who comes and goes, as I told you, Shivangi ma'am dies. Members, um, let's say for example, Mr. Dhirubhai Ambani, he incorporated a company, why do you think he incorporated a company ma'am to do some business of course but do you think he would have ever imagined that as and when i die the company should also die see even in the worst of dreams no indian parent can think so that whatever i am earning is for my own self i don't think any indian parent can do so we always have this, uh, we have the desire to earn not for our own selves but for the younger generation, right? So we pass on everything to the generation. We pass on the legacy, we pass on the investments, everything. So uh, likewise, we also want to pass on the business. 
it's not just about the legal here it's also about the brand that you establish about the values that you have put into the business so mr dhirubhai ambani started with a vision he started a company and he did not want that company to end if you choose a business form of organization like a company you get this beautiful feature that no matter whether i am there or not there are members there are directors there is a whole procedure there is law which has to be followed and by following this law by complying with this law a company will never run into a situation of liquidation so the company will always go on and on and on company is an artificial person a person is born by natural death but the company is born by the legal process of incorporation so as and when the company is incorporated how is it going to be wound up right how is it going to liquidate that is also important so we have a whole process of dissolution and that's a legal process so just like a company is created by a legal process a company also gets dissolved by a legal process that's the only way you can wind up a company otherwise the company goes on and on and on for a foreseeable future till the time you can imagine 100 years 200 years 300 years 500 years whatever vision you have the company is going to go on and on and on we have an expiry date our life expectancy is uh, 75 70 it's it's quite reducing earlier the people used to live up to 100 years now it's reducing so we have a deadline but the company doesn't have any common seal what do you mean by common seal common seal my dear is the official signature of a company official signature it's just like a stamp earlier it was mandatory now it's not mandatory that means a company may have an official signature it may not have an official signature matter of fact a company doesn't have an official signature and the company wants to enter into some contract who will sign it if it has an official signature we put a stamp and it's like okay the company has signed it but otherwise who will sign it so we are going to read about the signing part and all that i'm going to tell you who signs and everything the directors are being authorized to sign that so it is what you have to remember is it is the official signature but 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 it is optional okay it is optional next is transferability of shares transferability of shares okay what is transferability of shares supposedly let's take the example of salomon again salomon and company limited salomon had four sons often it happens that one of the son is uh, not very worthy he turns out to be um someone who you cannot trust someone who is tougher someone who doesn't listen to you someone who is not very good at academics and and all the bad things right so salomon doesn't want to give him any share in his company but he has already given him one share so salomon thought i'll take that share from my son and give it to my elder son he is very disciplined he is very sensible he always listens to me and like things so can it be done yes the shares may be transferred some students have this misconfusion or misconception that uh, shares cannot be transferred in a private company well they can be transferred even in a private company although there is some restriction about which we will study later when we discuss about private company public company one person company then we will discuss that okay <clears throat> but yes they can be transferred okay fine so the shares can be transferred great then comes your separate property again let me take an example separate property which 
actually I took this example in my Hindi batch also. But I don't think I have to erase the whole thing. Okay, let's say for example, I started with a company. I started with a company and I have a go down. In that go down, I have I started with a company. The company has a go down. Go down has certain mobile phones. Okay. Because I'm doing that business of mobile phones, I'm going to buy the mobile phones and sell them. Right. I buy them at a wholesale price and that's, I sell them at retail prices. Now, since one go down is filled with thousands of mobile phones, they're very prone to risk. There might be some short circuit or anything like that. And the whole go down may run into fire. So for that, I want to take an insurance policy. I want to protect my uh, mobile phone. So I called the insurance company and took a policy in the name of Shivangi Agrawal. You must have got my mistake by now. I took the insurance policy in the name of Shivangi Agrawal. The funny part about insurance companies is that whenever you want to take any policy, they are so desperate to sell the policy that they will agree to any and everything that you say. Okay, this, this will be done and there will be no problem. I am here. Right, so such uh, over promised uh, statements led me to this and I took a policy in the name of Shivangi Agrawal. Because I thought it's my company, it's my go down, these are my mobile phones. Now what happened is... Somehow God did not favor me and the go down actually was caught by fire and the mobile phones were destroyed. But I was sitting calmly and satisfied that no problem, I have an insurance policy and nothing is going to happen to my mobile phones. So I was kind of relieved. But then came the insurance company and at the time of claim they are like, hmm, let me see. No, 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 this claim is not possible. So they are always like that, insurance companies and they came and rejected my claim straight away. I said, why? Why this uh, um, is happening to me? They said, because the mobile phones belong to the company. I said, yes, of course, but the policy belongs to you. You don't have any interest in these mobile phones. I said, I do have an interest. No, 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 you are different. The company is different. We cannot pass a claim on such goods which do not belong to you. These goods belong to the company. This go down belongs to the company. I said, you should have taken care of this at the time of uh, taking the policy. No, at the time of selling the policy, you were very eager and you did not take care of all these things. He said, we don't care about that. Ultimately, what I am trying to conclude from this particular scenario is that the company has a separate property and we can in no way claim that property to be ours despite the fact that I have incorporated the company, I am the shareholder of the company, I run the company in the capacity as a director, I cannot claim it. Right? So no member can claim to be the owner of company's property. I hold the shares of Reliance, that doesn't mean I own the property of Reliance. Right? And uh, I even does not, uh, even a member does not even have an insurable interest in the property of the company. This is exactly what I told you through that uh, example, right? Okay, capacity to sue and be sued. So a company is a body corporate, you can sue it. And uh, the company can also sue someone else if the company uh, suffers from any breach or anything like that. Okay, simple point. Now, now we come to an interesting concept of corporate wheel. As I told you, uh, many a times we feel that this 
concept of separate legal entity that they are different, they are different, they are different can be misused a lot of times. I have to do any fraud. Let's open a company. Let's take some money and all. We will run away and the company will now see because they cannot come the bank person or the financial institutions or anyone that I have defrauded. They cannot come and claim money from me legally. Right, because it belongs to the company, I've taken money in the name of company. So they cannot come and claim anything from me. So I can easily get away with it, right? But this is something which should not be allowed. So government um, has taken a step at different places. What government has said is, that first of all, you need to understand this concept. There is a wheel of incorporation. Have you heard of that song? I hope you understand what parda means. Parda means curtain. Anything which is behind the curtain, we cannot see it. Imagine a puppet show. And this is not the file. Imagine a puppet show. What can you see if a puppet show is going on? What can you see? Oh, see this pink puppet. This is looking so beautiful. Oh, see this green puppet. It's slightly down. Oh, look at this uh, yellow puppet. It's turning towards the left. We can only see what these puppets are doing. We cannot see. We cannot see who are the person who are behind this puppet. Maybe this person is intentionally doing something to the puppets, right? Do you, do you get my point? So, exactly this is what happens in the case of, exactly this is what happens in the case of company also. We have company which is being run by the directors, by the members. There are two decision-making bodies of a company. One is the board of directors and one is the shareholders. Board of directors look after the day-to-day -day affairs and everything and some share powers are reserved for the shareholders also. They are the two decision-making <coughs> powers uh, bodies of the company. So they take decisions. But whatever decisions they are taking, however they are turning the company, it's the company which is visible because they are behind that curtain and they are shielded they are protected from that curtain they are shielded they are protected from that curtain because they do not have to uh, answer anyone they are not answerable to absolutely anyone it's the company if you remember the same example can be used for this case also i'm not going to use the surname the ones who are smart will obviously understand if someone, if Mr. Manmohan is doing something, he comes up with a policy, we blame him. He has done this, he has done that. He, but he is someone who might be guided by Sonia. The way she is turning Manmohan, he is turning in the same way. Right? So can you go ahead and file a case against Sonia? No. Because Sonia is different and Manmohan is different. Although we have a clear indication that this is happening, we cannot go and file a case against her. But in the case of company, we cannot let this injustice happen or prevail. So when we know that the company is doing some fraud, but it's not actually the company because company is an artificial person. It's these people who are doing them. So government should take some steps to expose them, to expose them and penalize these people who in the name of company are doing something which they should not. So this is my dear known as lifting or piercing of corporate veil because there was a curtain which protected the members from the actions of company. If company does anything wrong, company is liable, company is responsible, company should be penalized. This is the general rule, general wheel of incorporation. But, but at times, the law, 
disregards this and says that lift the curtain and when you lift the curtain you will be able to see the real persons who are behind this action of company and accordingly they will be penalized okay so a company is in law a company is in law distinct from its members this is known as wheel of incorporation but uh, and that is they are shielded from liability which is connected uh, to company's actions but when the law disregards this corporate entity and actually looks behind the individual members who are running the company that is known as lifting of corporate wheel under lifting of corporate wheel we see two classification one is statutory provisions statutory provisions and the other is judicial interpretations judicial interpretations we are going to discuss here the judicial interpretations what is ma'am statutory provision statutory provisions that uh, the provisions which are made under statute under companies act 2013 you must have uh, seen if you remember there was a provision of misstatement of prospectus wherein if in the prospectus there is some error okay it is not the company which is liable it's the people who prepared the prospectus they are liable so this is a provision which is there in the statute itself which disregards separate legal entity and instead pays importance to who is the person who is behind this prospectus and penalizes that person so there are many provisions which are there in the statute which ignores this concept of separate legal entity and lifts up the corporate wheel which we will read as and when we progress companies act okay but there are also judicial interpretations what are judicial interpretations let's say again um, <coughs> let's take that example of mr ambani supposedly this happens in a real life that mr ambani has uh, actually done that fraud and he took away all the money and all the creditors are shattered they all the creditors what they will do they'll come to us we cannot do anything about it so they'll go to court when they go to the court the court will admit their application and start proceedings so during proceedings the court has two choices to say no 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 nothing can happen the company is different mr ambani is different whatever he has done is okay so that is uh, maintaining that principle of separate legal entity and the other one the other one is disregarding corporate personality that is looking behind the real person who has done this and whoever has done this should bear the consequences right so there can be two situations where courts decide whether to lift the corporate wheel or not we have some famous case laws through which we have established that okay if if uh, this happens if someone is trying to evade tax then we will lift the corporate wheel right so there are certain cases where we have got judicial interpretations where we have got judicial cases where the courts have taken this judgment of lifting the corporate wheel which we are now going to study you don't have to learn the names of case laws Uh, ma'am which case laws we have to learn see it's not uh, very easy to learn all the case laws so i'll tell you which case laws you have to learn hardly five case laws uh, throughout the course i'll tell you to learn so don't worry about it and uh, more importantly you must remember that in what under what circumstances is corporate we lifted 
although this is a very basic provision and a basic question which should not be asked in examination at your final level of course that is what I sincerely believe but still maybe one mark two mark three mark they may ask since it is a part of your syllabus right okay so the first point protection of revenue what is it to protect the revenue protect the revenue means revenue of government what is the revenue of government taxes government gets revenue from collecting taxes state government from state taxes central government from central taxes right so to protect this tax government may lift the corporate veil what happened in this case dinshaw menegji petit Dinshaw Menegji Petit had huge income. Imagine you get 50 crores a year. Let's imagine. Oh wow ma'am, such a peaceful life it would be. Still, your concern, your first concern as a professional would be, oh my god, such heavy taxes I have to pay. Is there anything I can do about the taxes? Supposedly you get a salary of 50 crores. Then you have no other way than to pay taxes, right? So such heavy taxes you had to pay. But Dinshaw Menegji Petit, he had income from investments. So he had huge investments and from the investments he was earning. Whatever he was earning, he had to pay heavy taxes. So he decided one fine day that let me incorporate four companies and let me transfer my investments. Let me split my investments and um, transfer them to these four companies. Now what will happen is, I will not have any income. And since my money has gone to these and they are going to receive the income, I will take my money in the form of loan and on loan I do not have to pay any taxes and their incomes will also be reduced accordingly the tax and all, tax planning and all he did that. So it will be reduced. So just for reducing this tax burden just for evading tax these companies were formed they were not doing any business they were kind of shell companies okay they were not doing any business nothing at all they were formed only for the purpose of evading tax and since they were formed only for the purpose of evading tax the judge said although these companies are different from Mr. Dinshaw. Mr. Dinshaw is a separate entity and these companies are a separate entity. So the income of this particular company should be treated as income of this particular company only. But since these companies are formed for evading taxes, we will disregard this corporate personality and consider this income as of Mr. Dinshaw only. So in this case, the judge actually went out to lift the corporate veil. Clear? Next case. Next situation. Determining enemy character of the company. Daimler Company Limited versus Continental Tire and Rubber Company Limited. Daimler, Daimler, Daimler. Okay. So here we have, the company was incorporated in England, okay, the company was incorporated in England, but all the members, all the shareholders were the residents of Germany, residents of Germany. Now, do you know what happens? Do you know what happens? During war, you must have read this in Indian Contract Act. What happens during war is uh, the entities of two countries, the countries who are at war, they are not at peace with each other. The two countries who are at war, the entities of those two countries cannot also contract with each other. They cannot, right? Because they have turned out to be alien enemies. Right, so they cannot contract with each other. Now, 
this particular company entered into a contract with another company of England. Prima facie, there looked no problem. One company of England is contracting with another company of England only. Why the problem? Because Germany and England are at war. Why this problem? But if you look deep, you will realize that this company is only looking like an England company. It is actually a German company because all the shareholders are of <coughs> Germany. So to determine whether they are alien friends or enemies, we have to disregard this corporate wheel and look behind the real person. And when we look at the real persons behind this, we come to know that yes, they are alien enemies. So when we want to determine the enemy character of the company, we can lift the corporate wheel just as judge did in this particular case. Right? Okay, next. Smith Stone and Light Limited versus Lord Mayor, etc. of Birmingham. In this particular case, um, if you understand it um, in an easy manner, supposedly I call you and uh, I tell you that go to the DM of your city and uh, give this particular proposal if he agrees collect advance from him you go you, uh, you went there you gave him a proposal and he agrees and then you take some advance that advance belongs to you or me that advance belongs to me why because you were merely acting as an agent in the same manner the company Company formed another company, turned a partnership firm into a company as its subsidiary and that subsidiary was not doing any uh, thing separately. It was just acting as the agent of the company. So when it is just acting as the agent of the company, then whatever uh, belongs to that company belongs to the parent company. So when some compensation was decided to be given to the subsidiary company, that compensation should belong to the parent company. You don't need to get into uh, very deep details of this particular case law. All you need to remember is this. Okay. So when some companies form another companies as subsidiaries to act as their agent, the corporate wheel is lifted. Next. <clears throat> Lifting of corporate wheel could be done in case of transfer of shares of company which actual sale of land which the original lottery was prohibited to do so. Okay, um, let's say there are these four persons who have formed a company. Okay, this company supposedly has got some land which is allotted by some government and this land can't be transferred for 10 years. This land belongs to the company. The land cannot be transferred for 10 years. That is the only condition of allotment. The shareholders transferred their shares to another company. Now ideally the land belongs to this particular company. Although transfer of land was not permitted, but now the company is different and the shareholders are different. So shareholders can transfer their shares as and when they want to because there is transferability of shares. Right? So company did not do anything. So company should not be penalized and they can also not be penalized. Do you get it? How smart. Right? So in such a situation also, in such a situation also, company, a corporate wheel was lifted and it was said that no, you both are the same and you have transferred this company, you have transferred this land indirectly and hence the allotment is cancelled. Okay. Next is the case of fraud, Jones versus Lipman. Uh, if you form any company for just defrauding someone, the corporate wheel will be lifted. And lastly, we have 
if the company is trying to avoid legal obligation of welfare um, legislation we have this rubber industries okay now a company had some income and based on the profit of the company bonus is computed you all know about industrial laws you know about payment of bonus act so bonus has to be computed according to the relevant laws which are applicable and bonus has to be paid mandatorily it has to be paid to the workmen to the labor right um, under labor laws you have read about it so the workmen were very happy because of the income of the company they were getting huge bonus but the company was not so happy the company thought that i should reduce my profit just to not pay the bonus so what company did it all the um, investments from which it was receiving that interest income dividend income etc etc it opened another company and transferred all its investments to that particular company now what happened is the profit of this company reduced and hence no bonus bonus is your statutory obligation and just to reduce that statutory obligation or to uh, get away with that statutory obligation the company actually formed another company and transferred the uh, investments so this company and this company will not be treated as separate legal entity and the court supreme court upheld and um, uh, actually uh, wanted to look at the real transaction by lifting the corporate veil okay so this is what happened in the case of workmen of associated rubber industries limited versus associated rubber industry limited the workmen of that company and that company right so that's it with today's class hope you have been able to recall the basics with me what we have studied so far is the characteristics of company artificial person perpetual succession limited liability uh, capacity to sue and be sued in its own name separate legal entity uh, transferability of shares separate property right all of that and uh, then we have discussed about corporate wheel corporate wheel is that wheel of incorporation that there exist um a wheel between the members and the company the members are being protected shielded or guarded from the actions of the company and at many point of time this corporate wheel may be lifted in courts by the judges or uh, by using some past judicial interpretations or under the statutory provisions right so thank you children and um, have a great day see you in the next class